Hello everybody, welcome to Dirty Air. I'm your host Alex Lambert and let's talk about NASCAR in Music City. Chase Elliott getting his second career win of the season and of course his 15th career win of his career. And uh, an exciting night in Nashville, a pretty great race from Nashville Super Speedway tonight. It's a late night though, it's past 12 o'clock here on the East Coast uh, due to all the weather that rolled through. Let's talk about it. First off, I gotta mention the weather. That's obviously gonna be a number one topic, a main topic uh, about this race that needs to be discussed. Uh, the lightning delays, I've heard some talk about the lightning delays shouldn't have happened, stuff like that. I think most fans can agree the lightning delays are definitely a major safety concern. I think, uh, you know, having the 30-minute hold is, is, is something NASCAR needs to do. I know there's been uh, fans injured in the past. I believe it was at Pocono. It was probably over 10 years ago now where some fans were hit by lightning uh, and injured some fans. Uh, uh, so obviously, you know, you don't want to have that happen, so you do have to stop the race, you know, for the safety of the drivers, the team members, uh, and of course the fans, most importantly, uh, to keep those fans safe. So I don't have any problems with the lightning delays, especially when it's within uh, a certain radius of the racetrack. Uh, then, of course, we had the rain shower come through. I believe the first delay was for lightning for about an hour. Then we had a about a two-and-a-half-hour rain delay uh, uh, later on in the race, uh, right before the halfway point. NASCAR did a pretty good job at getting the track dry in a pretty, you know, timely manner. I believe it was from the point the rain stopped to the time the jet dryers got on track. It was about 90 minutes from the time the jet dryers started working and the air tightens started working to the green flag. Uh, it was less than 90 minutes. So that's obviously pretty good to see. Uh, not too long of a hold, not too long to take uh, the track, not too too long of a track drying process. That was pretty good. The only concern I do have that I think I've mentioned before, I think many of fans have mentioned before, is the start time for this race was 5 o'clock. I think that's way too late. I know NASCAR is going for the later audience, you know, the prime time uh, to get the higher TV ratings. But in this case, and in multiple other cases just this season, I go back to Dover this year, a couple other events in the past couple years, and then, of course, you go back to the, you know, 2020 and 2021 Daytona 500. It really does cost NASCAR when you have these issues. Like I said, the Dover race earlier this year had to be finished on Monday after giving up the whole afternoon. I think earlier start times definitely need to be looked into uh, with, with coming out with the next 2023 schedule, and hopefully that is uh, evaluated because I like earlier start times. I don't even think 12 or 1 is really what you need. I think 2 to 2.30 should be the latest these races are started. 5 o'clock was way too late. You gave up the whole afternoon. Obviously, you don't know that rain's going to be there when you schedule it, but it is frustrating sometimes to wait around all afternoon and then turn the race on for a rain delay or a lightning delay in this case. But anyway, let's talk about your winner. Chase Elliott's second career win of the season, 15th career win of his career. Uh, a pretty big win for him. This actually is a track that has a lot of similarities to Dover, the where he got his first win at uh, a few uh, last month in May. Uh, obviously, it has a lot of differences as well. You know, this track is obviously a little more than a mile, almost a mile and a half. Dover's definitely more banked, a one-mile racetrack, but it does have its similarities. Uh, both of them are concrete surfaces, uh, which is somewhat rare in NASCAR. I think Bristol's concrete. Not many tracks, especially the size of Nashville, have concrete surfaces, so it's a unique racetrack in that aspect. Very weather-affected, like I talked about the weather earlier. Uh, you know, with the sun going down, you were able to... You know, this race was really split into two two pieces. You had the first 140 laps and then the, you know, the lightning, the rain came right before the halfway point to where they couldn't end it. And then when nighttime came, the track was cooled off a little bit more after you laid some rubber down. You saw the drivers have a lot better handling, able to make some more moves, uh, battling for the lead and stuff. You saw Chase Elliott do that. You saw Kyle Busch do that. You saw Denny Hamlin work his way back up from his penalty, uh, able to get a, um, a top 10 there. Uh, but unfortunately not the win for Denny Hamlin. Uh, so you were able to see that. Chase Elliott, like I said, when he gets on a, you know, this is a dangerous team. When he does get a win, he tends to build off of it, you know, get that momentum and win more. Uh, I said that after the Dover race, didn't quite see that happen. I don't know if this will happen with the next-gen car, but Chase Elliott right now has to be one of the championship favorites. I'm not going to say the championship favorite just because of the way this year's gone. I think you still have Chastain in that argument, probably Denny Hamlin in the argument right now, Kyle Busch, who's been running up front but not getting the results, uh, fastest car every week almost, or top three car every week for Kyle Busch, but Chase Elliott is consistent. He's super consistent. He finishes in the top 10 almost every time I go through this list of the top 10. And, you know, getting those wins obviously helps. It helps him with the playoff points. Major championship threat right now, Chase Elliott. When we go in these playoffs, if there's one guy to look at uh, that's very consistent, I'd say it's Chase Elliott. The only other one maybe would be Christopher Bell, but he's not winning. 
Uh, so uh, that's definitely a point of concern for Christopher Bell. But let's go through the top 10 just real quick. Chase Elliott, like I said, your winner. Kurt Busch, a great run for him, was running pretty decent, was able to stay out of pit road, not go down pit road on the last caution with uh, I think it was a restart and four laps to go. Wasn't able to give Chase Elliott a uh, rough tough enough to try to get by him. Even Kurt Busch said in his post-race interview, you know, I wish I had to just, you know, race him a little harder, maybe you know, maybe bang fingers, uh, fenders with him a little bit instead of just let him go on by. Uh, Kurt Busch said that. Uh, and I kind of agree as a fan watching, right? Uh, Ryan Blaney finished third. Pretty good run for him. He was really fast during the day portion of the race. And then, unfortunately, the nighttime portion of the race, the second half, he faded a little bit well, with the caution, shuffled up everything, got a third-place finish. Kyle Larson ended up finishing fourth. Ross Chastain, who started or actually had a pit road problem, was spending most of his day recovering, was able to get a top five, uh, but was not really in contention for the win all night. Now, Denny Hamlin is a big disappointment because we know in this race – Dirty Air played a huge role, but Denny Hamlin had a major pit road mess up, and that's really frustrating because the pit crew for Denny Hamlin has actually been very consistent this season, but they made a mistake on pit road, and that could be the result of no crew chief, no front tire changer. That could be the result of that. Uh, obviously, the penalty a few weeks ago uh, losing the tire gives you a four-week suspension of the tire changer and, of course, the crew chief. That could be a result. You know, I know it's still unacceptable for them to make that mistake, but there's a higher risk of making that mistake. And when you're in the cup level and you add three to four seconds to a pit stop, which doesn't seem like a whole lot, but you go from first place to sixth place, there you go. I mean, that could have potentially cost Denny Hamlin the entire race. I think Chase Elliott was faster and probably would have got by him anyway, but a sixth place finish for Denny Hamlin after a dominating performance tonight by him all day and night uh, is certainly a disappointment for that 11 team. Definitely have to reevaluate what happened tonight. Very disappointing for the 11 team uh, tonight with that, that issue on pit road. It's a shame that that uh, did happen to Denny Hamlin tonight. Uh, Should have got a better finish. Should have been in the run uh, for the win. He was super fast all night long. Uh, Austin Sendrick ended up finishing in the seventh position. He actually almost got wrecked. He was able to come back. I believe he was a lap down at one point and was able to come back up and get a top ten when everything shuffled up. Christopher Bell, one of those guys, like I said, a very consistent driver. He's in the top ten every time I go through this list, no matter what. He's not winning. He needs that step to try to improve to get that win and start getting those wins, but uh, not quite yet. Uh, but an eighth-place finish, actually a little bit lower than what he usually gets. Usually he's in the top five every time I go through the top ten. Uh, but the speed for the Toyotas tonight was definitely there. Joey Logano finishing in the ninth position, pretty decent at these kind of flatter racetracks like Nashville. Uh, and then, of course, Kevin Harvick, who's battling Eric Alvarola, his teammate, to make the playoffs on the play pay playoff cut line right now. I'll talk about that in a moment as well. I have to say, a uh, disappointing night for the Toyotas, really. Uh, it, uh, Bubba Wallace Jr. Uh, finishing in the 12th position. What a shame for that team. What a shame for that 23-11 team, that 23 team. It's ridiculous that he's constantly having to run, you know, he's running up front, running in the top 10, having a decent day, and then something goes wrong on pit road. Then he recovers, and something else goes wrong on pit road. Uh, he's having problems with the crew chief. You can tell on the radio that there's a lot of frustration from Bubba Wallace with his crew. That needs to be addressed by the team owners. That needs to be addressed by somebody in charge. They've got to stop making these pit road mistakes. It's every single week we talk about this. One of the worst pit crews in all of the Cup Series right now, worse than the guys that run in the back every week. He is... It's really frustrating to watch because he's a Toyota driver, and he's really fast. He has the speed, just like his teammate Kurt Busch does, almost every week now, especially as we get into the summer portion of the schedule. But he can't do anything with it because, I mean, what are you going to do with, with you know losing multiple spots on pit road every time, whether that's a penalty, whether that's just a super slow pit stop, losing multiple positions, like four to five positions on a regular pit stop on a regular basis. It's ridiculous. It's a shame. Kyle Busch. Uh, ben Bay Shore, I don't know what happened with the call there. He finished 21st, uh, you know, battling Chase Elliott, the guy here battling for the win in this race, uh, trying to battle for a regular point, regular season championship, which gives you 15 bonus points per round in the playoffs. That's You've lost 20-something points on that now with the 21st place finish. Some reason he went down pit road, I'm not sure why. To only get two tires at that, really I don't understand that call. I'm confused on that call by Ben Bayshore. He's made some questionable calls since he's taken the role of the number 18 crew chief. I don't understand a lot of the calls made at the end of these races. It seems like he's costing him more than he's gaining them. And then obviously with all the issues that happened on the restart that probably were going to happen, you knew it was going to be wild back there, it shuffles Kyle Busch back to 21st. So don't understand that. Same thing with Martin Trex Jr. He was sitting third and then goes down pit road, finishes 22nd. 
I don't understand that. Really disappointing night for Toyota. They were the fastest cars besides Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott was obviously faster than all the Toyotas, but the Toyotas were all top 10 cars, and only a couple of them finished in the top 10. So that's really disappointing to see as well. I do want to mention the playoffs, though. Uh, Blaney, 112 points in. He's really safe. He looks like he is in and good right now. I'm not too worried about Ryan Blaney. The only concern would be if we get multiple different winners, which is definitely possible. But I think if we do, Blaney would be one of those winners. Truex Jr., 73 points ahead. Still a pretty decent cushion, but remember, there are you know 60 points available in each race to gain if you win the both, both the stages. Uh, obviously, Truex got the stage points tonight, so it's definitely not a guarantee, but a f somewhat comfortable cushion in case he does have a bad week. But a couple of bad weeks, three bad weeks, some unluck, uh, some bad unlucky situations could put Truex closer to that bubble. Christopher Bell, actually, I don't know how this is. I thought he was more consistent than that, but he has had some problems at the beginning of the season trying to recover from those issues at the beginning of the year. But lately, he's been very consistent, 37 points in. But like I said, there's you know, 50 to 60 points able to gain or lose each Cup Series weekend now with the stages and the race results. That's not safe at all, 37. That could definitely switch uh, and go uh, negatively for Christopher Bell. So definitely still want to stay on tap if you're Christopher Bell. Kevin Harvick, this is the one that's battling. He's battling his teammate. I believe Harvick was seven points below the cut line going into the, today's race at Nashville. And then obviously being able to run up front, get a few stage points, and get a somewhat decent finish. Ended up finishing 10th. His teammate Eric Amarola finished 17th. He is nine points in. That's really close, but that's not comfortable at all. You want to be at least ahead of Christopher Bell. When you got races, two pack races coming up, Atlanta and Daytona to end out the regular season this summer, that could be two surprise winners right there. Not only that, we go to a road course next week. That could be a surprise winner. So definitely want to stay on top if you're Kevin Harvick. I think you might want to be going for a win here, at least get above Christopher Bell. And I don't even know if you'll be guaranteed in then because there is only four spots left uh, for driver to get in. Tyler Reddick, uh, like I said, he runs up front. He's really fast, but he doesn't get those results. Has a lot of problems. Uh, had some guys run over him a couple times, get some bad finishes, hasn't been able to get that win that he probably deserves. 52 points out, then Dylan and Jones both more than 50 points out. It's not looking too good for them. They'll still be able to come back in, but they got a lot of work to do. Uh, but that's really it. That's all there is to talk about after NASCAR at Nashville. Going to be looking more into these playoff standings as we keep going uh, few, uh, forward. You know, it's the NBC portion of the year. I'm going to be diving more into the playoffs. Just a few races now, you know, at the end of the summer stretch, will be starting the playoffs. So definitely want to look closer in to those points. Next week, one of my favorite weekends of the year, July 4th weekend, Road America up in Wisconsin, a road course race. race. One of my favorite road courses on the schedule right now. Uh, we go there next week. Tune in for Dirty Air. I obviously do a race review right after NASCAR at Road America. And, of course, about Kyle Busch getting a bad finish today at Nashville, tonight at Nashville. Let's get rowdy.